Hey, we keep selling, that is what we do. And why? Because people have needs. Those needs need to be filled by somebody. We are not salespeople, we are superheroes. <laughs> Hey, let's talk about how to ask for the sale in a virtual selling environment. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about that. How do I ask for the sale if I'm not face to face, if I'm in a virtual environment? Now, why would they be asking that question? Well, I think it stems from a perception that the ask for the sale in a virtual environment is not normal to us. And if it's not normal to us, it won't be seen as normal to the customer. So what we end up with here are several different ways to ask for the sale, but none of them work because we're not fully prepared. It might be that sort of apologetic tone. So you wouldn't want to, you know, I mean, no pressure, but if you, I don't know if maybe you, you wouldn't want to like buy, would you? Or they panic and they launch into an abrasive approach. <laughs> What's it going to take to get you to buy from me today? And then worse still, there is no close at all. But what are the outcomes of a poor closing approach in a virtual environment? Well, for one thing, the customer still needs to have their problem solved. If you assume that they don't want you to ask, what are you doing? You are forcing them to ask you. Please, please don't make your customer do your job for you. Look, this doesn't have to be a Glen Gary, Glen Ross approach. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Instead, let's look at the buyer's journey. Let's look at it from their perspective. And it begins with the balance of emotion versus logic. One of the things that tends to happen here is that when we get into the virtual environment, if our energy goes down, if our emotion levels go down, then we literally train our customers to be non-emotional themselves. That's a real problem because people make decisions emotionally. So if we are not carrying what I call emotional altitude, we're going to drag the emotional tone down. The fact is there is emotion with every step of acceptance along the way. Now a big part of this is understanding that when you are purchasing, it's not just one decision. It's a whole lot of decisions. My wife and I recently got a dog. That wasn't one decision. We had to decide on breed, on size, on age, a host of other factors. Your buyer is the same thing. Your buyer has milestones, or if you will, building blocks. These are the fundamental aspects of the sale, the small decisions that will bubble up into the big decision. You need to understand those foundational decisions that will add up to the big decision. And I'm going to give you an assignment for that in just a little bit. But they also need you to show them how to buy. See, part of that assignment is for you to normalize the virtual purchase. Normalize it in your mind first, then normalize it to the customer. You can decide right now that your customer needs this, that this is an important service that you're doing for them. Got it? Now, Having said that, we ask what building block decisions does a buyer need to make? Write them down. And then write down a closing question for each building block decision. And what you'll find here is that these milestones, these foundational decisions that a customer needs to make, these become your roadmap for the sales call. So having laid out the path in your own mind, you can now prepare the buyer. I can say to the customer early on in the conversation, listen, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this in the call, and then we'll do this and then this, and when we're done, you'll be able to make that decision as to whether this is right for you. Now, the goal here is to normalize the close to the buyer. Now, watch out here, because when you skip those foundational decisions that your customer needs to make along the way, you are going to add cognitive strain. And if you overlook the positive emotion necessary, your customer will not be in the right frame of mind to make a decision in the first place. And finally, skip your own mental preparation and your strategy will be one of hope. And hope is not a strategy. 
Now, I'm going to make one other suggestion. Do this with a peer. Sit down with one of your teammates. Determine what are those milestone moments and what are the questions that you can ask. The most important thing that you can do is prepare your mindset for a virtual call. How do you want to feel before the closing question and when you ask the closing question and after the closing question? How do you want to feel? Get your mindset right and the customer will follow suit. There you have it. How to ask for the sale in a virtual environment. And until next time, learn more, turn more.